Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with Storage Review. We've got a box of goodies from our friends at G Technology. It's a brand owned by Western Digital now. It's been that way for a while, but uh, you know, just reinforce that. These aren't exactly new products, but what they are is pretty cool. And for whatever reason, we hadn't seen G Tech products in a while, so they put these three in a box, and and here we go. Uh, we've got a couple mobile products. This is their uh, G Drive mobile SSD. We also have their Mobile Pro SSD. The big difference is that this guy uses Thunderbolt 3, so it's going to be really fast. They quote uh, 2,800 megabytes per second on the box. This one's a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector, uses the USB-C cord, uh, but it's going to be more uh, aligned with SATA performance. 560 megabytes per second is what they quote for this one. We'll check both of those out in just a second. The other product that came in is this G Drive Pro SSD. So this uses an enterprise SSD inside and is really designed for high-end workloads, 4K, 8K, AR, all sorts of those other types of workloads where performance and endurance on the drive is really important. And so you'll notice with this one, not only do they quote the 2800 megabytes per second for performance, they also have an endurance spec of 1750 terabytes written. They can do that because of the higher quality drive inside we're guessing when we get to the point where we can open it up that there's an HGST drive inside there. Uh, that brand within WD always had a great legacy of excellent enterprise SSDs. So we're looking forward to seeing that too. But what we're going to do is start with the mobile drives, go ahead and unbox them, and see how they do when connected to this MacBook Air from a performance perspective. So let's take a look at these mobile products. We'll start with the mobile SSD. R series. Now both of these are in the R series, which is a, more, a little bit more ruggedized line designed for those creative professionals that might find themselves out in the uh, less friendly environments than a typical office. It's IP67 rated, which means it's water and dust resistant. Uh, it's also got some ratings for a thousand pounds of crush proof and three meter drop tested. You could probably drop this thing quite a bit further than three meters. It uh, feels nice and sturdy no compression on the case when we squeeze it and looks really nice so it's got the GTEC uh, logo ID with the color highlights underneath USB-C port the screws are kind of a nice touch just from a visual ID and presumably an indicator light on the back let's go ahead and see what else we've got in here they include a USB 3 cord and then the USB-C now these are actually kind of handy because they're so short. A lot of times these portable drives come with a real long cord that uh, may be useful in some cases, but in the portable drive, especially if you're going to throw this thing in your pocket, dealing with a long cord can be a drag. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect it to MacBook Air here. And these devices all come pre-formatted for Mac. Now this one, both of the mobile drives come in 500 gig, terabyte, and 2 terabyte capacities. And so we'll go ahead and fire it up just to see what we can get here when we use Blackmagic on, uh, on the Mac. So we'll select our target drive, find our G drive, mobile SSD, open and let this run. Now we don't normally see much variation in terms of the write and read speeds. Once it gets going, it'll wiggle within a couple megabytes per second either way. And as we're seeing for a SATA drive like this over USB-C to the Mac, this is pretty typical. We normally see 450, 470 sort of the max on writes. And then on the reads, we'll normally see exactly what we're seeing here about 490, 495. Oh, look at that, it dipped up or, or hopped up, I suppose, over 500. So this is very typical. We do have our drive indicator light active on there now. And uh, overall, exactly what you would expect for a drive in this class. But that's not all, because we also have this guy, the, the uh, Mobile Pro SSD. Now what this gives us is a lot of the same look, but the big difference is that aside from the larger, larger drive, still same design ID, you've got the G, we add the Thunderbolt signal there, the same port, 
and the same indicator on the bottom, although this has a silver plate where this one's black. But the importance here is actually critical that we need to get a hold of the cord that came with it or a Thunderbolt 3 compatible cord if you have one already. Now they look just like the USB-C cords. They act just like them, but as you'll see here when I get the uh, twisty tie off, there's a little lightning bolt and a 3 on the cord, and that's really important because that means it's a Thunderbolt 3 compatible cord and that that's going to give us the performance that GTEC wants to provide in this particular drive. I'll go ahead and connect him. And we'll switch out the target drive here. And go down to our Pro. Now, when we hit this button, we really should expect to see numbers that are far surpassing the SATA drive we just took a look at. And there we go, out of the gate. So we, when we were seeing 450, 460 before, now we're seeing 1,726 megabytes per second right, and uh, well over 1,800 on read. Now, of course, that's less than what's quoted of the 2,800 on the box, but again, this is pretty typical for drives like this. The manufacturers tend to quote best case scenario, and when we connect this to uh, other scenarios, other machines, we might be able to eke some more performance out of it. But either way, we're looking at 1,700 plus writes and uh, over 2,200 megabytes per second read. Hardly anything to complain about. Let me get these two out of the way, and then we'll get to work on this G Drive Pro and see what that looks like, because that one from a design standpoint is going to be really interesting to see how they've leveraged the SSD in this enclosure and we're really curious to find out what's inside. So let's move on to this one next. So now moving on to the G Drive Pro SSD. Now you might think we took it out. We actually haven't. This is an older uh, G Drive. This is a four terabyte hard drive based USB enclosure. But what's really interesting about the manufacturing that GTEC has always put into these things is that they're rock solid just super well built. These aluminum enclosures have been fantastic. And we only pop this one out and, and dig it out of the archives just so we can see over time what the difference is, if any, in the, uh, in the design of the system. Of course the logo and some of the ID will be a little bit different as time has passed. But let's just take a look. Alright. Oh well, we can already tell one major difference between this and the hard drive one, and that is it is a heck of a lot lighter. This is actually so light it would pretty easily drop into a backpack or you know, video editing bag, whatever you carry with you, without much trouble. So the case has gotten a little bit darker, but it's still really well built, solid all the way around. It's got a unibody uh, design on the outside. On the back we can see the power connection for the external power, uh, a couple Thunderbolt ports, power switch, fan, and the, uh, the lock slot. Around the front we're going to get a lot of ventilation, the G which probably lights up, and the Thunderbolt uh, logo indicating that capability. Before we get too far along with testing, we just can't really help ourselves but to pull these rubber feet off and void our warranty to see what's inside. So underneath these feet that are glued on there pretty well, I must say, get this third one off. There are uh, a couple Phillips head screws and presumably one under this void if removed uh, sticker. So if we are good at nothing else, we are definitely good at voiding warranties on systems we see. Unfortunately, uh, with a lot of the portable drives and some of the other designs it makes it really hard to get at the uh, the drives inside although with the screws on the front of the the little ones it might be a little bit easier but the uh, where's that last guy there it is but this one is since it's so unique with this enterprise drive inside we really just want to see how they did that so with our warranty fully voided let's slide this out Let's see what's inside. All right. 
So when we pop this thing out, we can immediately see the, the large heat sink here. And even though there is an active fan with an enterprise drive that's running, well, if not 24 seven, quite a bit, having a, uh, a heat sink to draw the, the heat off of that is gonna be really important. Now this enclosure is really kind of designed for the same drives that they had used before, largely three and a half inch hard drives. Uh, so that's why we see some of these uh, the mounting positions the way they are. It's got these four little rubber grommets here. We can pull those off and we can see when we do that there's a little screws there. Get this one off. And one more. Now that gives us some flex where we can lift this up but it's not quite coming free. So there's a couple screws at the bottom here where the uh, interface connector is. So let's get after those next and see if that helps us release this thing. Now, most people would never go through this level of uh, disassembly, especially after they spent, you know, this thing's north of $1,000 retail. So don't really recommend doing this at home, but we enjoy doing it. We also didn't have to pay for it. so there's less risk to us. All right, so that gets us a little bit of freedom, but it looks like we might want to go ahead and take these fan screws out as well. See if we can get, uh, get that drive to come loose. And this is all just because we're curious. There's no real reason for this other than just wanting to know what's inside. There we go, that shroud comes off. Now we can see the board, the wiring connectivity. And give it a little wiggle here. All right, so we're almost there. Let's go ahead and take the heat sink off the rest of the way. There's four screws. They're relatively easy to get to, holding in the, uh, the drive. Just trying to be a little bit careful so we don't damage anything. So we went ahead to remove the PCB and the thermocouple for heat sensing. Now we can pull this out the rest of the way. Move this little sticker. And as we thought, it's an HGST drive. It's the Ultrastar SN200, uh, 960 gigabyte, as confirmed, both on the outside of the box and the drive. So this is a great drive. It's an enterprise drive, really capable, been around for quite some time. And uh, we've got some reassembly to do to get this thing back into testing configuration. But just in terms of validating that we know what's inside, it's, a, it's uh, fantastic and really helps to understand why these things start at uh, $1,100, $1,200, because you're getting this enterprise quality drive. Let's go ahead and uh, get it connected to the MacBook and see how it performs. All right, so I've gone ahead and plugged in the power supply. We'll turn on the switch on the back and then connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable that they were provided. Now, before we go and run this test, the important thing to remember here is while the sticker is the same as the SSD Pro Portable, it's important to remember that the drive is going to perform a little bit differently than, than this guy. So they're both going to top out similar on the, on the uh, read speeds, but since this has an enterprise drive in it, we're going to probably see a lower write performance. That's okay. This is designed to be just written to and read from uh, over uh, several threads, many applications, and has an endurance spec to stand up over time and provide that all the time. Sometimes the uh, client focused drives will give back some of that performance over a high endurance uh, or a, a lengthy test where the endurance is tested and um, an application hits it for a long period of time. So out of the gate, we're seeing about 950 megabytes per second on the right, but we should still see 20, okay, so we're up over 2,000 on the read speeds. When we go ahead and do the full performance benchmarking on this guy and connect it to uh, some of our uh, 
uh, bigger systems and, and tests that are more well suited to take advantage of the multi-threaded write capabilities, we should be able to see a little bit more action there. So we'll do that um, as, we, as we go along with the review. So again, these drives have been out for a little while. It's just been some time since we've looked at the GTEC family. This video roundup gives us three of their leading products all at once. These two portable SSDs uh, that, uh, that look great and perform really quite well. And this more performance oriented, uh, endurance oriented drive for uh, video professionals that are working with large files that can take advantage of, of both the read performance and the endurance that this offers. So keep an eye on storagereview.com. We'll be back with a full review of uh, all the performance attributes of these three. And uh, that should be up in the next couple weeks. Thanks for watching.